the G it was uh, very clear that um, the learning and development is coming from the field, from those that were participating in the in the consultations as a, a critical need for them. And that's why we have an elevated status for um, for learning and development in this strategic period, which basically means we we all try to dedicate more resources and time to make sure that learning and development receives the resources that it needs um, and also um, and also kind of remains a, a, an ongoing priority within within our work. So the competency framework, uh, some of you may have seen the, the old version of the, of the competency framework, which actually was one of the first um, products of, of the Alliance after the Alliance was, uh, was launched. And uh, it really kind of took our sector to a, to a different level in the sense of we, and when I was a practitioner in the field, um, I would organize trainings and, and capacity building um, efforts but a, a lot of the time it was based on specific skills that we needed to develop at that, at that time or what was available in terms of training material. We rarely kind of went into the level of really trying to understand what competencies are required uh, to, to deliver on the work that, um, that is needed. So this, the first version really kind of took us one step closer to that. And this, this new version, which actually um, is an improved um, um, kind of uh, version of the first one uh, with, with a very heavy emphasis on um, aligning it with the minimum standards for child protection and humanitarian action because the minimum standards was revised after the first version of the competency framework was launched. Therefore, um, we, we saw the need for, for this revision to really kind of align the, the competency framework with the minimum standards. Uh, which was achieved masterfully by our, our leads and those that supported this, this process. Um, and based on the, the competency framework, now we have uh, a few additional support, support tools, including the training package and the guide that will be presented today in this, uh, in this webinar. So with that, I just want to thank uh, the leads, especially, and the speakers today uh, for helping us launch this important document. And thank all of you guys again for being here and hope that you can benefit from this session and also the, the framework itself going forward. Um, and I'll hand over to Katie or Elena. It's me. Thank you so much, honey. <laughs> um, Great. So I am going to talk through uh, a little bit of background and then a little bit about the structure of the competency framework in its new version for those that haven't had a chance to see it yet. So we're just going to start by um, going over what is a competency and why a competency is so important. So competencies are, are statements that can be demonstrated. So they encompass a purpose or a statement of what you're trying to achieve by doing a particular task. And they're related to role performance. So how well you're performing your role and achieving your work objectives. And they're usually accompanied by a set of behaviors which are used to indicate or to measure whether you're, you're doing something. Um, so something that we could see another person or ourselves doing to see whether we're, to kind of assess whether we're using that competency. If we could go to the next slide, please, Manami. So competencies are the, the end point that we're aiming at. So for example, um, it might be that I, I want to develop community level approaches to child protection and humanitarian action. And each competency is underpinned by a set of skills, knowledge and attitudes. So what you're able to do, what you know and what you believe. And those three things combined make up the competency. So for example, a competency might be um, applies humanitarian principles and to do that, you would need to know what the humanitarian principles are. You would need to believe that they're important and you would need to be able to select the appropriate skill in the appropriate context. So all of that together would mean you're competent in that area of applying humanitarian principles. Competency-based learning um, then is, is an approach to learning that really focuses on the purpose of the learning. So we're not just learning for the sake of learning or because it's interesting. We're really learning in order to 
uh, achieve these competencies and be able to do something differently. So it supports the transfer of learning into professional contexts by having a stronger focus on how we will use the knowledge and the skills that we gain through learning activities. And um, if we could just go to the next slide. There's a couple of reasons why this is important. Um, it improves our role performance because we're, we're thinking more about how we will use what we've learned and how what we're learning relates to what we're trying to do, the objectives that we have in our work. Um, and it's also really useful to establish consistent and measurable criteria for recruitment and selection, for performance management and professional development. Um, Eleanor will talk a little bit more about some of the tools that we have to help you use our CPHA competency framework for those purposes in, in a few minutes. Um, but I'm just going to talk through how the, the, the new version of the CPHA competency framework looks and how it's organised. So if we could move on a couple of slides, Imani. Thank you. So the CPHA competency framework has just been revised, as Hani mentioned, um, and that revision was based on the newer version of the child protection minimum standards, but also on feedback from child protection in humanitarian action practitioners who had used the old version of the framework or people that weren't familiar with it, but were interested to use it. So the main changes are that it is now more closely aligned with the minimum standards. Um, including a new section of competencies related to the guiding principles for child protection and humanitarian action. And we've also updated the competencies for working across sectors based on learning from recent and ongoing projects that the Alliance has um, in collaboration with other sectors. So the overarching purpose of the competency framework is to contribute to improved child protection outcomes in humanitarian settings by providing a, an interagency set of technical and behavioural competencies. So the framework describes the expected standards of performance across different competency areas um, that apply to different roles. So we would never expect one person to require every competency in the framework for their role in child protection and in action. How is it structured? So there are three areas within the framework. So we've got um, Guiding principles, so competencies related to the CPHA guiding principles, which describe the expected behaviours that should be employed in order to role model the guiding principles that are essential to implementing child protection in humanitarian action programming. And then we have technical child protection in humanitarian action competencies, which describe the technical knowledge, skills and attitudes that, uh, that practitioners need to be effective in their roles. And then we've got core humanitarian competencies for child protection. So these describe the core behaviours that child protection practitioners need in order to operate effectively in humanitarian settings specifically. So these are adapted from the core humanitarian framework, core humanitarian competency framework, um, and we've made them a bit more specific to child protection and, and the work that we do. If we could go to the next one, Manami. Yeah, so this is just a, an overview of the competencies and how they fit into those three different categories. But it's, I know it's very small, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. So if we could go to the next one, then I'll... Thank you. Um, the competencies are organised into groups, so we call them competency, competency domains. So each domain will probably have several competencies underneath it. Um, those domains are aligned with the pillars of the child protection and minimum standards. So it has a very similar structure, which we hope will really help people to make use of it. Um, and then each competency, as you can see here, includes indicators or behaviours at three different levels. So level one describes individuals with limited experience in the relative competency domain um, or people that are, are mainly involved in the implementation of child protection in humanitarian action activities. And then level two is people with some experience in that domain or who are more involved in the coordination and management of um, CPHA activities. And then level three is people with significant experience in that competency domain who are mostly involved or who are mostly involved in um, leading CPHA programs and strategic thinking. So you might be at different levels for different competencies, depending on, on what your role is and um, which, which of the competencies are relevant to the work that you're doing. If we could go to the next slide, please, Manani. Thank you. Uh, so who is the framework for? Um, it's for individuals who work in the sector or aspire to work in the CPHA sector, 
Um, and individuals can use the framework to reflect on their own capacities to identify strengths and areas for development and to identify future career and development aspirations. It's for organisations who employ child protection staff and or volunteers. Um, and organisations can use the framework to, to map CPHA capacity strengths and gaps, um, to identify priority areas for recruitment, to inform planning and organisational design. Um, you can use it during recruitment processes, and Eleanor will talk a bit more about that, uh, during performance management and um, as part of performance uh, professional development planning. Coordination groups can use the framework. Um, so as a coordination group, you could use it to assess capacity strengths and gaps across a response and to define priority areas for capacity strengthening um, if you're developing a capacity strengthening plan, for example. And then training and learning providers can use it to conduct targeted learning needs assessments and to inform the design of learning programs and learning products to support CPHA practitioners at all, at all different levels. So I'm going to hand over to Eleanor who is going to talk through some of the tools and resources we've got available to help you make use of the framework. So, hi everyone, my name is Elena Giannini and I co-lead the Learning and Development Working Group with Katie. And um, yeah, I'm happy to introduce uh, some of the tools that like accompany the CPHA competency framework. And I think that would make it easier to use uh, uh, in your setting. So if we could go to the next slide, please, Manami. The first and uh, most recent piece, like, uh, of most recent tool that actually was developed is the Competency Development Guide, which is um, a mapping of available learning resources um, and where you can basically find, uh, you can send post practitioners to the relevant uh, available learning resources and identify, and it also identifies gaps in available learning resources. So, so it's a tool that it's uh, um, useful for practitioners in general, but also for L&D experts to look at where the gaps are for the sector. If we go to the next slide, please, like the development of this guide has not been one phase only. It's rather uh, been a number of steps. First of all, we identified the relevant uh, knowledge and skills for each behavioral indicators. Then we associated to those uh, uh, learning objectives. We mapped CPHA learning resources against those learning objectives. And then um, hopefully like this tool will allow practitioners to more easily navigate learning and development products that are available that could help them grow in their careers. And as I mentioned, it also identifies gaps that are uh, uh, gaps that, that exist like in the CPHA sector as to learning uh, learning and development resources available. If we go to the next slide, please. It's uh, the competency development guide. It's a living document. So we kept it simply simple visually, easy to use and easy to navigate. So um, as new resources are being produced like by the sector um, on a variety of different topics so we want to be able to um, update it you know regularly to make sure that the latest learning resources are actually plugged into this document so if you do have feedback on available learning resources that you should plug into the competence development guide, we're definitely going to be interested to hear from you. That's, as I mentioned, the latest addition to the, to the tools available for the competency framework. And uh, a lot of work has gone into it. And uh, we really hope that uh, you spend a little bit of time exploring it, but also sharing it like with your uh, colleagues, as I think it's uh, um, a very valuable tool. There are others. So if we go to the next slide, please. Uh, there is a set of like three other tools that go with the CPHA competency framework. The first one is a job description um, 
comprehensive framework overview, overview template, um, which is a tool to help you build the job descriptions, basically, using the competency framework itself. Um, the competency framework overview template is not shown in a job description, and we are aware that uh, most of your organization have already got a set of templates or structures to use. But it, you know, using this template, it can help you build um, uh, the roles and responsibilities that fit, like within uh, the the template that you have for your own organization, um, depending on the role that you're looking at filling, reporting lines, etc. Um, the second tool is uh, thanks, Manami, for switching through. It's the interview planning tool. Uh, it's this uh, guidance is meant to help you take a competency-based assessment approach to interviewing that is uh, linked to the competencies selected for the job description, terms of reference, depending on what you're using. All the, interview, all the interview questions should ideally be based on technical and core humanitarian competencies that were identified in the previous step, so the job description level for that specific role and adapted from the CPHA competency framework. The third and final tool is um, the practitioner self-evaluation tool, uh, which can be used both by um, both at for self-evaluation, but also by um, uh, managers to um, go through a performance management process like with uh, uh, CPHA colleagues. It helps uh, undertaking a self-evaluation of competencies in regard to the position uh, that uh, you are occupying. Uh, it can support the process, as I mentioned, of professional development, of professional evaluation performance evaluation of practitioners and help guide the discussion between them and their line managers. And thirdly, the tool can also be used as a basis to define learning and develop needs and opportunities for uh, that practitioner, particularly if used in conjunction like with the competency development guide that we have just seen. Um, so these are the three additional tools that go uh, like with the competency framework, but we also have like a training um, or like a training outline so that uh, you can actually re repeat. Uh, sorry, Madame, if you could go to the next slide. So we have um, a short training package. Uh, it's a three hours session actually on the purpose structure and content of the CPHA competency framework that you can use uh, um, to basically further disseminate the competency framework and its tools. Uh, it comprises a session plan with face-to-face uh, -face remote instructions, so, so you can administer it like in both uh, methodologies a slide deck uh, to support the delivery of the session, but uh, with several exercises so that the participants get to practice using the tools. So I think this is all in terms of like what is available um, uh, as a package, like uh, to complement the CPHA competency framework. But we're now gonna hear from a colleague, Lu Two colleagues actually, Lucy Alingria and Anguillot from Save the Children, about how their experience using the competency framework. Um, and I leave the floor to you. Mm. Thanks a lot, and Elena. Welcome. So we will present uh, you in five minutes, something like that. Uh, just an illustration how we use this uh, framework uh, in the frame of uh, PDP. Um, most of you may. may knew about this program. It's a, the Child Protection in Emergency Professional Development Program. So this program is uh, as uh, so slide two, if, if it's okay for you. Um, so maybe just for you to, to have a small introduction, what is the Child Protection in Emergency Professional Development Program? Uh, this program uh, aims to strengthen the capacity of child protection professionals 
and also to strengthen the CP uh, sector wide and improve immediate response capacity. So this program is designed on a global level by Save the Children to improve the skills, knowledge and behaviors required of uh, mid-level uh, child protection professionals in a humanitarian child protection response. So uh, we are in charge with Lucy to implement this program in West and Central Africa. We have implemented three cycles already directly for uh, 80 participants uh, in five francophone countries. And by themselves, those uh, 80 participants have trained in their own context of work, more than 1,100 participants, colleagues, partners, or members of, of communities um, on different topics of CPMS. So it's a cascade training, if we can say like that. Um, slide, please. So just for you to understand uh, that we have we have made this construction of this program regarding um, really in link with the Alliance Competency Framework. Um, we have this program uh, build the capacity of child protection players according to uh, directly to the criteria of the competency framework. Um, the framework that we use for our program uh, it's, let's say, a simplification of this framework. Um, and we use this framework to define the skills objectives to be achieved. And the framework is applied to each of the program components. This is really important for us because we have different components in the, pro in the program. For example, we have training of trainers, we have uh, job placement, we have uh, a simulation exercise, and in each different component, we have used this framework. And just to notice that the tool that you have just presented, Elena, the tool free, number free, um, we use already, it, but we will use the, the new competency framework in details because we ask the participants before and uh, before the program and after the program to make an auto-evaluation of themselves and it will be very interesting uh, to measure of course the progression of each participant uh, so it's it's important to to use for example your your tool number three uh, slide three please um, yes i think it's already down uh, slide four uh, so we will make a small focus on one component of our program, uh, which is the simulation exercise. Um, so just for you to understand the exercise, uh, we know that a great deal of uh, research suggests uh, that adult uh, learners, um, the adults learn better when they are active participant in the learning process not only in the concrete cognitive experience of events, but also in the interpersonal exchange and also emotional aspect of learning. So we use this simulation exercise um, uh, to offer our learners um, a very practical training. So during three intensive, very intensive days, our learners are in immersion, in, in immersion in a scenario uh, as if uh, it, it was uh, the real world. So uh, we give them a, fic a fiction context, a ficti fictive context, and each participant plays a role of child protection professional. We divide them in different groups. Each group, it's a fictional uh, NGO. And they have to work together individually and together they have to work, to interact, to make decisions, to respond to the crisis and, uh, and to respond to the child protection needs in an emergency scenario. So it's very particularly uh, uh, useful learning technical technique uh, for those who have to work in emergency or in high pressure context, context where it's necessary to be able to apply technical and managerial expertise 
um, in complex context, um, of course. So the simulation-based uh, learning requires uh, learners to take action of, uh, on their decisions. Um, to uh, allowing them to test the impact of their decision. So it specifically targets the identified learning outcomes of the program. Over three days, the team of um, the simulation team, of course, will observe, will comment, will evaluate the participant in their decision that they are taking. So uh, the observers of the simulation team um, will make individual observation and also uh, collective observation and evaluation. So, Lucy, please, for the last slide, if you can present the, um, the observation grid, please. Lucy? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Thank you. So we are going to give you a practical example of the application of the competency framework through the observation grid that we use during three days of this exercise. So how we use it, we create an observation grid in numeric format in uh, MSF, MS form on Teams, but it could be used uh, in any types of numerical format. In that way, Observers can enter their real-time observation on their smartphone for three days. So you can see on the pictures our colleague Andogona from Save the Children Côte d'Ivoire on the right side. And he is wearing a pink tissue, which is the common sign to indicate that he is invisible. That means that he is not taking part of the simulation and he is observer. Each NGO has its own observers, but observers can walk through the different uh, NGO to, um, to write uh, any uh, observation. During three days, they will observe and evaluate skills, knowledge, and attitude, which is it's not always only the knowledge uh, during this exercise, but also skills and attitude individual, but also of the group. How are they working together? Uh, is there leadership? Uh, is, if the leadership is very tough, it, it doesn't let the others working, it can be very challenging for the group to work. So for example, uh, they will observe how they are un understanding the context and applying the principles. Uh, were well, they managing collaborative relationship together or with the partners because they have like meetings or they have to write some reports? How they are managing in high pressure and changing environment because during three days they will receive many information of the context who is changing because it's an emergency situation and how they demonstrate leadership, how they are working together. All these competencies are extracted from the competency framework of the Alliance. With the help of the TA, because each team has an observer who is not taking part of the exercise, but they also have a TA, a technical advisor, who is helping them to, to, to write reports or to take um, good decisions, but they're, they're, they are just giving uh, advice. The reports and recommendations produced by the group during the simulation in very short period of time are also evaluated like technical competencies. For example, developing adequate child protection strategies, ensuring program quality and impact. At the end of the exercise, a summary of all the observation, because it's like, I don't know, seven or eight, nine observation for each participant, is made, so a summary is made, and an individual feedback is made by email to each participant on the skills acquired and that have been observed, and what skill can be or competency can, can be developed. For us, it's, it's very important because it permits to each participant to situate himself in the acquisition of skill 
attitude and knowledge progression they have to make in their career and it's it, it's something that uh, the participant are very happy to receive because we we are not used as professional to receive this kind of feedback and it's very challenging but also very interesting to receive this kind of uh, feedback thank you Thank you very much, Lucy and Anna, for this quick presentation on how you have used the CPHA competency framework for the Child Protection in Emergency Professional Development Program. Now, clearly, and Lucy's uh, uh, role in managing this program is uh, very much uh, focused on capacity strengthening and learning and development, so it fits very well with the use of the CPHA competency framework, but as I've highlighted, like the CPHA competency framework and its tools are for many, they're not just for learning and development or capacity strengthening initiatives. We have a quick menti to take with you. Um, if we could share the link, Manami, please. And the question is, how uh, will you use the competency framework? So Manami will put like a link like in the chat, like and uh, if you can take just a quick minute to tell us a little bit how you plan to use uh, the uh, the framework yourself. It's a um, free text answer. So feel free to include whatever you think like you're gonna be using the competency framework and its tools for. So I'm just gonna leave like 30 seconds to let you reflect a little bit on this. And I see already some answers and inputs are coming through. Great. Uh, see, like there are more answers coming through. I see to more systematically build the capacity of my team, share with HR colleagues to support recruitment, job descriptions, and interviewing. That's a great one. Um, as often, uh, HR colleagues are not aware of the existence of like these tools necessarily. So it's up to us, CP CPHA experts, uh, to guide them like uh, to these uh, resources, evaluating programs. Mm. The competency development guide for my own learning, sure, like it can help you uh, drive your own learning forward. Developing TORs for technical job to check for capacity gaps uh, in the implementation of child protection pro projects. Adapting with the current competency, definitely it can help me evaluate my competencies and understand which areas I need to strengthen as a CP specialist. That's great. Learning needs assessment, competency develop development guide to see what learning resources are available for different topics. Great, so that we don't duplicate efforts, capacity building or strengthening of staff developing capacity strengthening capacity building and supervision so i think there are plenty of examples here for those that have flagged to check capacity gaps and learning needs assessment um this is one of the tools that uh, we have recently thought was missing from the suit of tools that we have made available and that um, we might as the lnd working group work a little bit upon uh, in the near future. So stay tuned and uh, uh, for more on this one, we'll try uh, to give you something that it's easy to use uh, for, learning, for learning needs assessment through the CPHA competency framework. Integrating CPHA competency framework in various phases of the program. Great. All right. That's 
all great ideas and suggestions on how I can use it. Don't forget, obviously, to pass on the message like to your teams and networks. We are happy to take any questions like from from the floors. We have like a few minutes. And we had collected a few questions from uh, colleagues like uh, through the CPHA community of practice. So I have like a few ones as I don't see um, questions in the chat yet. Um, but maybe I'll ask one question um, to the to Katie that uh, we received like uh, from the community of practice. Um, how does the CPHA competency framework link with the competency framework in the case management training package? So some of you might be aware that there is a case management training package like which has been just released a few months ago, and it has an accompanying competency framework. And the, the question is around the synergies between the two documents. Katie, I will leave it to you to answer this question that I'm posting in the chat. Thanks, Eleanor. Yes, it's a good question. So the CPHA competency framework um, is less detailed for case workers than the, the competency framework in the case management package. So within the case management learning package, um, that's been designed at three levels, but focused on case workers. So the competency framework in there is very much aligned with that specific learning package. In the CPHA competency framework, we mention, we highlight where it might be useful to go and look at that one as well. So we, um, we link to it, but we don't duplicate any of the content. And that's also the case for the competency framework that is contained in the CAFAG, the Children Associated with Armed Forces and Armed Groups Programme Toolkit. There's a competency framework inside that as well. So we um, make a connection to that and we make a connection to the Inspire competencies as well. So we, we signpost where it's useful to look at some of those others, where there's something even more detailed um, because our CPHA competency framework is aligned with the child protection with minimum standards, it covers a lot of different competency areas. So if there's another more detailed framework, then we will point out where you can where you can find that and, and where in our framework it might be useful to do that. Um, we have another question that has come through the community of practice earlier on. Um, and I think to an extent, Anne and Lucy have um, responded to it. Like, but yeah, I feel um, like we can, I don't want to put you under the spotlight, Anne or Lucy, but the question is, how can you use the competency framework to design training? And maybe you can just uh, share additional thoughts to what you have already shared. Anne or Lucy, feel free to come in. You can, you want to go first or I go, Lucy? <laughs> you can start. <laughs> okay. For example, we use, um, we use also it, uh, but in a simplified way, as we mentioned. Huh? It's very important to appropriate this tool and to make it simplify as we need, just to be sure that it's it become my tool. Um, it's important. For example, we we do a lot of uh, uh, training modules. Uh, and for that, for example, we ask for different trainers to make a session plan before developing their modules. And in this uh, session plan, uh, will explain how they build their uh, training. Um, for example, we 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 mention some objectives uh, regarding the competencies that we want to 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 aim. So, for it's an example or another example that I wanted to mention during my presentation. I don't know if I was clear that at the beginning of the training we ask the participant to to make an auto evaluation of its of his own competencies and at the end of the training we ask him or her to make exactly the same exercise to measure the the, the, the progression so in this questionnaire of course we will use different um, items 
uh, of this framework to measure what we want us particularly to measure um, in uh, in the training that uh, we want to develop. I'm not. I don't know if uh, I am. Uh, it's complete. I don't know if Lucy, if you want to, yeah. to add something. Yeah, it will be the same. But as a professional of child protection, it's always difficult to evaluate our job. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes we evaluate by the end of a project if we have done something how is the impact of our action but as professional for for ourselves is very difficult because we know that being a child of protection professional is is not only the knowledge that you have if you know the the rules if you know the uh, your partner it doesn't make you a good professional it's also how you communicate with the others, how you communicate with the child, how you will work with your... And it's, it's always difficult to, to ev evaluate this kind of skills. So for me, this competition framework is a practical tool, even if it's quite <laughs> big, but you have to... Yeah, you, you make your own competition framework, depending also of your organization. But when you have this competency, these competencies, sorry, you can evaluate uh, your your colleague, or you can evaluate yourself because you know, okay, this uh, it can I, I can be better in this way. This is something that I'm 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 strong. I have knowledge on in these skills, but in that way, in this part, I have to maybe I have to follow some 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 MOOC or some Kaya stuff, but I have to do something with that. And for me, it's it's a very practical tool to evaluate professionals who are frontliners, for example. It's it's always difficult to, to evaluate this kind of job. Thanks, Anne and Lucy, for your input. I think, Katie, would you like to come in on this one? And then we'll take, uh, there are still a couple of questions coming through. Yeah, just so in terms of designing training based on the competency framework or how we can use the framework to help us designing training, when we developed the competency development guide, so we talked about how competencies uh, are made up of knowledge and skills and uh, beliefs or attitudes. So when we developed the competency development guide, we identified all of the knowledge and skills that underlie every competency. Um, and we've formed those as learning objectives. So if you're working on developing a new training package for child protection and humanitarian action, then get in touch with the LD working group and we can share that mapping with you. So there's lots of learning objectives that are already drafted that are kind of the, the starting point for designing a new training or learning package. So lots of that work has been done. So if you are designing something, then um, we'll share our email addresses, but let us know and we can share all of that with you to give you a head start in the in the development process. Thanks, Katie. So there is one question I can take. Is there existing tool for systematic monitoring and analysis of the competency framework for easy use by technical advisor specialists from Marion? Thanks for the question, Marion. If you're referring to um some sort of tool like to provide feedback like on the competency framework i don't think like we have such a tool but we're always open like to have a chat like with you if you have used the competency framework in any uh, specific way and um, we are you know like any actually of like the tools of the learning and development working group we are open to discuss for further feedback and also to learn from experiences like on the ground. Uh, Marion, if I've not responded to your question, please let me know in the chat and I, we can follow up again. And there is also another question in the chat um, on what is the best repository of global child protection reference data point related to existing and past details, uh, highly detailed on, a speci on specific issues and specific challenges, promoting positive pre-briefing in the field and learning from past, present city environment, challenges and context. So I wonder if this question is around um, 
what kind of induction like CPHA practitioners should have like a prior to deployment. And I'm not 100% sure if like this is the case. I think it's very, if this is the question around induction, then I feel that it's very contextual. It depends where you are, but there are certainly uh, some level one objectives like to be achieved that can be uh, navigated through the learning offer already available and that is highlighted in the competency development guide. So this would be my first reaction to this question. I don't know, Katie, if you have like other thoughts like on this one. No. Okay. The person that posed this question is highlighted, like as the but like if we have not answered in full your question, please let us know. I see Marion is happy with her answer. There is another question on can this framework guideline use be used for cross-cutting issues like MHPSS, PSA, and advocacy? Katie, do you want to come in on that one? Because <laughs> I know you're working on another interesting piece that might be relevant to this. Yes, um, so the CPHA competency framework, each competency is aligned with either one of the guiding principles in the Child Protection Minimum Standards or one of the standards. So um, there's, there's not competencies on cross-cutting issues specifically, but those cross-cutting issues are kind of weaved throughout. So there's quite a lot of um, behavioral indicators around advocacy. Um, and there is a standard around MHPSS, I forget the name or the number, um, but yes, a lot of that is in there. And then the Alliance, um, the L&D Working Group and the Child Protection Minimum Standards Working Group at the moment are working on another small competency framework um, around working across sectors. So how can um, practitioners in other priority sectors, so the health sector, food security and camp coordination, camp management, how can they um, mainstream child protection into the work that they're doing? So there's some competencies around how we work together and there's some around um, what, you know, what are the specific behaviors that other sectors need to do to bring child protection into their day-to-day -day work. So that will probably be available um, in the first quarter of next year. So we're still working on it at the moment. Thanks. Great question. Uh, thanks, uh, Abdi Kadir. Um, yeah, also to mention that is the standard 10 covers MHPSS, and there might be other competency framework developed by these colleagues as well. Uh, there is one additional question, maybe we're going to try and address that. How relevant is the framework for emergencies like flooding where service provision are, mo are mostly done in mobile? Katie, do you want to answer that or shall I? Go ahead. Yeah, if you can, that would be great. I think the CPHA competency framework is uh, adaptable to any context. Like so, it's like a very easy like to turn like the majority of the indicators, behavioral indicators, into what is most relevant like in your setting, and they are pretty much aligned like with the, the child protection minimum standards. So you will not find anything in there that is new to you. So navigate according to standards, like see what is relevant for you and adapt it like to those needs that are pretty much contextual. This could be the necessity to work like uh, through a mobile or a, a mobile approach because of different reasons like um, floodings, uh, security, infectious diseases, outbreaks. Um, as uh, I think Anne mentioned earlier, it's about making the tool relevant to your context. But again, a very valid question. And uh, we are about at time. And I think Manam is about to share a poll um, uh, that will, uh, will um, to basically inform us like on how you felt like uh, uh, about these webinars today. So if you can take like a few minutes like to fill this poll, that would be great. 
We would like to thank you all for your participation today and remind you that if you have any questions on the use of the CPHA competency framework, you just need to write us at uh, learning at alliance learning at alliancecpha.org and um, I want to uh, express a special thank you to Anne and uh, Lucy for being here today and um, give you back like two minutes for a coffee break hopefully. Uh, thank you so much everyone and have a good rest of the day.